All right. After all of those complications with transverse loads, you're going to be glad <laughs> to deal with uh, thin walled pressure vessels. Um, this one's pretty straightforward. This is sort of a, a little oddball piece uh, right at the end of the class. So what is a pressure vessel? Well, it's a container that contains a pressurized gas, right? And it's something as simple as a um, uh, uh, fuel container uh, that looks like something like this, a propane tank. Uh, thin wall just means that the radius of the vessel is much larger than the wall thickness. So the ratio of the two is going to be larger than 10. Um, and that allows us basically to ignore a lot of the stuff that's going on within the walls uh, because it's going to be pretty straightforward what's going on within the walls uh, when they're really thin. If they get thicker, you're going to get uh, a more significant uh, uh, shear stresses and other kinds of um, complications in there. But uh, in a thin walled uh, vessel, we can ignore those. Um, and gas is nice because it exerts the same pressure everywhere, right? We know that uh, with the exception of depth, which in a gas isn't going to matter too much, um, we're going to see an equal pressure pointing directly out uh, no matter which direction uh, in our vessel. And that means we're not going to have much shear stress, right? If, if at every point we've got the same pressure pushing out, um, there's not going to be a lot of that sliding against each other within the thickness of the wall. Um, and so we get to ignore shear stress for the most, uh, for the most point. Um, we expand, uh, as we pressurize the interior with a, with a larger pressure, higher than atmospheric pressure, we're going to get expansive normal stresses both in this direction, um, which we're going to call an axial direction, and in this uh, one direction, which we're going to call a circum, uh, circumferential uh, direction. And they're going to be slightly different for a, a cylindrical uh, vessel like this. There's also a radial stress um, that's directed outward. Um, and if we think about that, we know that the inside of the vessel is going to have a pressure P. The outside of the vessel is going to have a pressure of zero, with atmospheric pressure. Um, those pressures are going to be smaller than the other two. Uh, and so for the most part, we can ignore uh, those normal pressures as well. So we get rid of shear stresses uh, and we get rid of that radial stress, uh, again, for the most part. So let's think about uh, how we might calculate those. Um, and we'll start with a cylindrical vessel. Uh, if we do a differential force balance across an axis here, uh, you can see that if we think about, you know, this pressure inside is going to be the same as the pressure outside. Some of the pressure on the outside is going to be pointed in, you know, not directly horizontal directions. So basically, we divide this here and we say, OK, this, we put a little box around the edge of our, this slice of the vessel, and we say the pressure pushing on it is going to be that pressure times the area here, not the surface area, uh, but the area right here. And that allows us to come up with a pretty easy mathematical situation because we know this is balanced, and that means the forces in the metal here and here have to balance these pressures there. Uh, and so a little bit of math, we find that the stress in those two wall sections is equal to the pressure force of the gas across this axial area. Um, nothing fancy about this. We're just calling this distance dy. Um, that's basically this area. 2R times dy times the pressure. So that's the force created by the gas. This is the force on the wall. Uh, and we solve that to find that stress. It's a function of the pressure, the radius, and the wall thickness. Okay. So that's that uh, circumferential force. A similar analysis across this cross section, right? Again, we can find the area here and calculate the pressure pushing that way uh, and then find the area of the metal that's resisting that pressure. Um, 
we do a similar little mathematical analysis and we find out that the axial pressure is PR over 2T. Okay, so what does that tell us? It tells us that the circumferential pressure is always going to be larger. Okay, it's always going to be twice as much as that axial pressure. Okay, so we want to we want to worry about the pipe breaking apart there, the vessel breaking there, rather than in that uh, axial direction. And we're always dealing with gauge pressure here because there are also pressures on the outside of this vessel which are pushing back. And if we deal with gauge pressure, we can ignore those. So a spherical vessel um, is going to, again, we're going to have a similar sort of setup here. But the nice thing is, is we've really already done this, right? This, when we figured the axial pressure for a cylinder, that looks mathematically a lot like finding this uh, spherical pressure uh, for a spherical vessel. Um, and you get the same result. Okay. Now notice that's the smaller of the two, right? Um, so what does that tell you? It tells you um, that you're always, you know, in terms of the stress in the walls, a spherical vessel is more effective, right? Because it can... Uh, the same material can take twice as much pressure compared to a cylindrical vessel. Now, why would we choose a cylindrical vessel? We can stack them a lot easier. They're a lot easier to manufacture, so they're going to be less expensive. So it's not an easy, oh, we should always use a spherical. Um, but given the same material and wall thickness, uh, your spherical vessel can withstand a larger pressure um, than um, your cylindrical vessel. Now that third stress is the radial stress, um, sigma three here, and that's always going to be equal to the gauge pressure. Okay. Now if you think about that, R over T, the the thin wall assumption here is that R over T is at least ten, right? Okay. So this is going to be a ten divided by two, so that this is going to be essentially 5p, okay, if r over t is 10, the smallest it can be. Uh, and that means this number is always going to be um, the, the, that spherical stress or the axial stresses, always going to be a lot higher, at least by a factor of 5 of that radial pressure. And that's why we generally can ignore it, because r over t generally is a lot bigger than t, a lot bigger than All right, a couple of quick questions for you. See if you were paying attention. Here's one. Good, and we'll move on to the second one. Here you want to think about wh where, which kind of stress is going to be larger. And then our third question right here. Answer that in the last slide, so you can go back and check. All right, that's it for this one. See, much easier than transverse shear.